So welcome back to this Authenticating Users tutorial part two. Um, so, so far we've got the selection index working on the, uh, the button when the button login button is, is, is selected because we're assuming they've selected something uh, from the users and currently the index is set to zero and uh, we need to just check that they have actually uh, done something with that. Another thing you can do to uh, avoid them selecting nothing is to actually make it a default selection. So if you click on the add items, sorry, the uh, spinner, and put the selection to an actual value, then it will always select that if they don't select anything else. So that's one way around this. So you can always get something checked. But at the moment, I've got zero set in there. Okay, so let's move on. So when the button logon is, is clicked, we're going to check to see that the uh, global index isn't zero, first of all. So we're going to do that, first of all, by an if block. So we'll take that if. Uh, we're going to put an else on it as well. So we'll just check that straight away. Um, and let's put that in there. So if the index is still zero, then they haven't selected anything. Uh, let's put that to zero. So if the global index is zero, then they haven't said anything. Or you could say not equal to zero, then they have selected something. So um, assuming they have selected something, then we ought to really also check that they've actually put a password in as well. So, so I'm going to uh, grab an AND operator from here, and I'm going to drop that in instead of what we currently have. Because I want to check if both cases are true. So let's have a look. Uh, they haven't entered anything, and also the password text box text field. Let's find that somewhere in here. There it is there. Let's see if that also has something in it. Uh, okay, so password text field not equal to null. So let's just get that, drop that in there. So if they've done both, both of those, in other words, uh, it's not equal to zero, and password text field is not equal to null, then we could go ahead and set the global index. Of course, um, if that does happen to be the case, that they haven't entered either of those, then really we ought to tell them to do that. So um, I'll call the notifier here, show an alert and say, don't be a Muppet, enter something in here. So uh, select user and enter the password. Okay, so we ought to really check this um, before we go any further. So we'll just do a, a connect to um, the emulator and just see what happens. Okay, any, just to check that. So we'll let that run and then we'll see what happens. And we'll just see what comes up. So passwords are retrieved, it's the first tag back, and names have been retrieved as well. So um, because we've selected a user, we've set the index to one, we don't actually need this block, so I'll take that out in a second. But there's nothing in the password, so if I log on, if I log on, um, we should see the error message. And there it is, select user and enter password. Um, if I do enter a password, whatever it happens to be, it's going to be fine because the user one's already selected as index position one. And there you go, no error message. Of course, if I bring that back to nothing to null, then of course we get the error message. So everything's working exactly as we want. Great. Okay. As I, as I said before, I don't need this block here, so that can go. There it goes. Bye-bye, don't need that in the bin. 
Um, and I don't need the AND block anymore, of course. So that can go goodbye in the bin. So basically, if it's not zero, uh, sorry, uh, not null, then we can go ahead, set the global index, and uh, select our user and password. Right, the other thing we need to do, of course, is to check that the password they've entered matches the user that's been selected. And I'm going to show you that in part three, so stay tuned to authenticating users. Bye.